take take a minute to introduce yourself and maybe just kind of just share a little bit of your background. Okay. Um, yeah, I live in Southern Utah. So I was born and raised in the LDS church, super wow. active family, big wow. like, five siblings. Um, <clears throat> my dad was in the state presidency, um, just super active LDS family, you know, on both sides of the family. <clears throat> just that's just it was just what we do, you know, who we are, what we do. Every everyone we know, like all of our events, Monday nights, Tuesday nights, weekends, you know, it's it, it just, um, it's all, you know, all, you know, all you do. And, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm very grateful for how I was raised. I, a lot of people, when they leave the church, they're, they're really anti, really anti, they can be really like bitter and ex Mormon. There's this big, and, the, and it breaks my heart now that like, I've found like the real Jesus, like I'm, Better? Awesome. Becky, welcome here. How are Hi. you? Good. I've been sick today, but <clears throat> um, I just, I saw your live thing come up and I was like, oh, cool. Cause I've watched a lot of your things. No, um, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Tons. Awesome. I don't know. Have you ever emailed me before? Cause I, I think no. this is the first time I've seen your name. Yeah. No, I don't think maybe, I don't know if I've chatted or emailed or, or, or maybe seen more of the recordings, maybe not been to a lot of the lives maybe, Yeah. but well, when so you good job. You've taught me a lot. Are... You've taught me a lot. Oh, well, that's, that's amazing. I'm so happy. Yeah. Um, when you were typing there and you said 35 years, I was like, oh, Lord, please let <laughs> her come on here because I want to hear your story. And so I know yeah. you weren't planning it, but and I know you're a little sick. So thank you for just taking a little time to be here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, no problem. Take, take a minute to introduce yourself and maybe just kind of just share a little bit of your background. Okay. Um, yeah, I live in Southern Utah. So I was born and raised in the LDS church, super wow. active family, big, wow. like, five siblings. Um, <clears throat> my dad was in the state presidency, um, just super active LDS family, you know, on both sides of the family. <clears throat> just, that's just, it was just what we do, you know, who we are, what we do. Every, everyone we know, every, like, all of our events, Monday nights, Tuesday nights, weekends, you know, it's it, it just, um, it's all, you know, all, you know, all you do. And, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm very grateful for how I was raised. I, a lot of people, when they leave the church, they're, they're really anti, really anti, they can be really like bitter and ex Mormon. There's this big, and, the, and it breaks my heart now that like, I've found like the real Jesus. Like, I'm like, that's, I'm like, this is maybe how God can use me because I can see I can see how a lot of ex Mormons get so bitter and they don't, they, they like, they don't find, they leave God, you know? So I'm, I, I'm really grateful for how I grew up. Right. Like I, it was strong fam family values and I can respect that a lot about the, Mo the Mormon culture. Um, and I have nothing against like the people, the culture. I'm not bitter about it. I'm not mad about it. Um, but a lot of people can get that way, but yeah, I grew up just su super active. I mean, and I, I think that the Mormon story or the Mormon, the narrative, like the more that I've thought about it, I think that it really feeds into, um, how, how can I say this lovingly? I think that there is a human drive to be the best you can be, right? Mm, yes. Like, like to be the best you can be. And that's super American as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so yes. it's like, it's it, work hard and it's, it's just, and that's also a very Mormon thing. Uh, like it's, it's, you know, you want to, you want to do the right thing and choose the right. And you're a, a warrior for whatever Helam's warrior and you're, you know, and you sing these songs and you're convicted all the time and, it's, mm. and, and, and you're, and you're, you're proud of that. You're just, so it really feeds into this, which becomes kind of, it could become a very prideful thing, mm. you know, if, if not checked, it could become right. a very prideful thing. And, and I mean, I do remember like looking back on it, I do remember very key times where I think it's in the book of Mormon. It talks about like, there's the one true church and then the, everything else is the church of the devil. Yeah, first and, Nephi 14, 9 and 10, right. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm so lucky that I'm in the one true church, you <laughs> know. And I was in ninth grade seminary, and I remember thinking that, right. you know. And I also remember a state conference we had one time with a local general authority. I'm not going to name drop, but like, and he stood at the pulpit and he said, like, 
a lot of people are questioning their faith and like he pounds the pulpit and he's just like, but where will you go? Mm. And like, I didn't even know if we could go anywhere because everything else is the church of the devil. You know, mm -hmm. I, you don't know where to go. <laughs> like you, there's no bridge to like even Christianity. There's no bridge to, I don't know. Cause I don't even like religion. I like religion. It's a relationship with Christ. Right. Amen. I think. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So anyway, it, but yeah, super, super active. And so like when I mean, when I say like, I, I mean, I went to BYU every summer, mm. um, you know, these summer camps, like I, I loved the church and I, I, I wasn't like, you know, like a little rebel. Like I, I was good. Like I tried to do the right thing and I, and I liked it. I wasn't mm. mad about it. I earned all the little awards in young women's. I, I had a, I had a missionary I wrote and I married him in the temple when he got home, you know, six months later. Wow. Yeah. Get married in the temple, you know, served callings and in our church served active. Um, he was, I, I can, I can tell where, where things started to kind of crumble for me. Um, and I do, I actually do, I actually do still give like God all the glory because I, I do think that there is a lot of ways that yes, like the enemy works in a lot of ways against us, but also I think that God allows certain things for us to learn certain things to bring us to a place where we need to be right. Yeah. Anyways, my whole marriage, I think though, my whole everything was based on the church. It mm. was my whole marriage. I mean, my whole list of things I wanted to do in life was like church, you know, marry someone who had this testimony, return missionary, that it wasn't like, can we communicate or, you know, what is his relationship with Jesus? It was like, does mm. he have this priesthood? And did he go, you know, it was this list mm. and it was, um, you know, and it was, did we pair? Like, I remember these checklists I would keep. Did we pair tithing and do this and this? Like, you you know, and did we go to the temple? And I'd be so upset as a married couple. Like, why aren't we going to the temple? We're not doing everything right. Why, why are we not praying together? Why are mm. we not? We haven't read our scriptures, Sam. Like, this is why things aren't working. Or, the, blah, 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 you know, just whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and our marriage, like, he left the church before me because he mm. actually got into all of the stuff like you teach about a lot. Just like the Abraham, how Joseph Smith. I mean, now that there's people that actually know and can translate that language. Right. The, the Abraham doesn't say what Joseph Smith said it. Right. And, and like, that was really clear. He's my ex-husband now. Like that was really clear to him, but I was still like, no way, you know, like, I can't even look at that stuff. Oh yeah. No way. Wow. And so, so different things touch different people. Yeah. I think women are more emotionally. Um, I think men and women obviously are different. We're made differently. We have Correct. different brain. Right. Yeah. Um, I think maybe, and you know, every human is different. So I can't even say that, but for him, the, the logical side of it all, worked the mm. church history side the joseph smith side he was like this is like once the internet and information is just you know he he was able to see it and so then then when we stopped and that kind of was a big part of our marriage mm. he, like once we once we didn't really have that because he left the church i like a lot of our marriage stuff we didn't have a lot. We had, our, we have two, we had two, we have two kids, you know, yeah. um, and things like that. But anyways, so then I, I actually left cause I actually, I opened a gym in our small town and mm. I started to meet a lot of people that like weren't Mormon, but they were really good people. Mm. Like, they were so kind and they were actually like, they would listen to me and they were like so attentive to things I was going through with my divorce. And I just saw people that I'd never really known that I was like, wait, 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 but they're not Mormon, but they're really good. And mm -hmm. not, not even that I had, cause I'm not that kind of person. Like I wasn't, I'm not like judgy, but like, oh, yeah. there was, like they had tattoos and they drank, they drank and they were like, but they were really good people. Like, I don't even know if they were Christian or, but they were good people. So gotcha. I just started just to look at the world a little differently. Yeah. I just started to look at the world differently. Like I just took a step back. Right. Right. Um, and then when I, for me, I didn't fit into that Mormon box anymore. I was a single mom. Right. Right. I like my temple covenants. They're gone. You know, there's right. just certain, lots of things right. were gone right. I right. a little differently. Um, I started actually like reading a lot more, just not like 
church history literature or even reli- not the Bible, not relig- not religious stuff, but like new agey stuff, right? Like right. Cartole, right. Buddhism stuff, right. Um, right. even like Sam Harris stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think we all long for this supernatural, right? We're all right. spirit. I mean, we come from our father, like, right? right? Like we long yeah. for this supernatural, right? So, and we long for things to make sense. We want, we all want truth, right? right? Anyways, so, you know, I still think that's a tactic from the enemy looking back on all of it. Um, anyways, I feel like I'm rambling. No, you're doing great. Okay. But this is, this is your mean, story. And so you're yeah. sharing your life. And I think it's very valuable. So, I mean, to sum it up, I guess with that path, like to where I'm at now, just, I think with like a lot of things happened in 2019, my dad passed away. I lost a job, Mm. um, that like broke me, you know, when you're, you're like on your face, like, what is this life? Yes. You know, and maybe that's where, uh, you know, and then 2020 was for the world kind of, I think a, what is up and down? What is left? And what is black? Like what, what world are we living in anymore? Yes, you know, right. who, what now we, we, we can't drive to Walmart anymore and walk in the grocery, <laughs> like just the weirdest stuff. And I'm, I'm by nature a questioner. Like I'm very, like whatever I do, I do like I'm passionate about what I do. You know, I'm very um, driven and, you know, I think a lot, I feel a lot. Like I'm not, I'm not, pa- I'm not a passive human in this existence, you know? Yeah. Um, I would hope none of us are, but like, I think so 20, I feel like 2019 was like this break, this kind of like this breaking year. And then 2020 was just kind of like this observant year. I don't know. And then 2021 things still weren't piecing together. Like I thought, okay, we're going to get things back to get, you know, like, so we're going to have forward movement, like, and then still just kind of like nothing was really fitting. And then I actually I came across this, this woman's testimony and she was talking about Jesus and the Lord. But the way she was talking about Jesus and the Lord, I was like, who is this Jesus? Like, this is, this is not my older brother. This is not my example. Right. This, like it was different. And then I remembered a friend of mine was like, have you seen the chosen? And I'm like, what? Oh, that's good. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, what? And so like, I listened to this girl, this girl talk about a couple things about this, the Jesus and a couple things that just made me think differently about Jesus. Cause the way she talked about him and like, there's just pow- this power about it that I was like, this is, this is a different Jesus. Cause I hadn't thought about Jesus mm. in a long time. Right. I thought about every philosophy and every self-help book. I mean, and every, right. Yes. And so then I start watching the chosen the very first episode is like Mary Magdalene, who have you seen it? Yeah. She's just like the single woman, yeah. you know, like yeah. Jesus sits next to her in this bar. And I mean, I could relate with so many instances of mm. this. And I was like, he knows us personally. He does. And he finds us right where we're at. Yeah. Like, amen. like and it just sent me on this like hunger, like true hunger for mm. this powerful Jesus. Yeah. Like, and your channel, and then like um, Jeff Durbin on Apology. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Were really helpful for me because I still had all my Mormon wiring. Mm. And it, and it was a lot of things are really, really, really confusing. Um, and I've shared a lot of this with a sibling of mine. And like when we, we like we we listen to something about the planet and James White, we listen yeah. to something with the planet of salvation. We're like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, it, like, but but like it's like when we look at it now, you know, it's just it just seems like so complicated and like because it's so simple and so perfect. Yeah. So like, yeah. Um, and so then I, you know, and I, I was so grateful because I'm, I'm a school teacher. I teach fourth grade, but I've had this summer to just like seek, long, thirst, hunger, pray, fast, like, you know what I mean? And it, wow. It's it's cool because like I have this, like, oh, I have to go to this church at this time. And I'm like, I just, I can just read my Bible and I can pray and I can like go on a walk and like try to like seek. And like, it's so personal. Like it's, yeah. I don't know. 
And, and, and when you typed a little while ago, remind me, this is all like this year, right? You, right now. You become a Christian, right? Yeah. Like, this is like very fresh. Yeah. Like I'm like one of those weird people that like, like I, I gave a guy water on the corner he, and I'm like, Jesus loves you. Like I'm like <laughs> prophesying over plants, like the weird born again people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is exciting to hear. Wow. Wow. You know, you made a comment a little while ago, which is so cool. Cause you talked about, you were really seeing Jesus differently. Now he was, he was more than just your elder brother for anyone out there is listening because you have insights of what you believed as a Latter-day Saint that is vastly different than the Jesus of the Bible. Cause a lot of times when I say people, LDS has a different Jesus and LDS would normally say, no, we believe in Jesus. How would you respond to that? now seeing the light? Good question. The biggest difference <clears throat> is the Trinity, like the triune nature that like Jesus, the incarnate like image of God in the flesh, like God in a bod. Like wow. that is, was the biggest difference. <clears throat> um, and, and that's why a lot of the Trinity stuff, it is very difficult. I can see why it's very difficult for Mormons. And I've had to work at it. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm talking about books, podcasts, videos, writing things down, like reading scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, <clears throat> and um, asking the Holy Spirit, like asking God about it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, like, because it, it, because we have this human brain and this, this mortal structure of everything, right? And also we have our Mormon wiring, which is, you know, very, and that is deep. It is. I, I mean, the way anybody's raised is deep, right? That's yeah, very, yeah, you're right. You're right. In our DNA, it's just so, but that is, it is so, it is so powerful to think of this almighty God, like God, you know, like that he would like, it's so, it's so much more powerful is what mm. I mean. Yeah. And, and also there was nothing in my experience, in my upbringing with um, the cross and the death on the cross. It was all like the garden of Gethsemane and this atonement. And you know, what's interesting is around the same time, like just barely middle beginning of July, I was watching Narnia with my kids, my two daughters. And I was like, everything was just like cool because whatever that little boy's name is, he'd trade, he was a traitor, right? Yeah, he'd done yeah. everything wrong. And here's Aslan that the lion and, as and, and Aslan's just, he hadn't done anything wrong. And he's like, well, my pure blood, like I can choose to give that for he him. You know what I mean? He went and died. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just like, he was just like, I'm sorry for my, you know, like it, there's such a, it, it, so the, so Jesus as God, like, as it, like, is a big difference. Yes. That's amazing. You know, and I don't know, like, you know, that's this year on my channel, if you've been watching the videos lately has been the Trinity has been the theme. It's been a big part of my ministry lately is really trying to clarify because you said earlier a minute ago, so important is that the Trinity can be confusing, but also as one will take the time to really open up the Bible Take some time to ask questions. Like I like what you said, asking God questions and just taking the time. I believe if someone is truly just seeking the Lord little by little, it doesn't mean they'll understand everything, but things will start to fall into place, biblically speaking. And now you, from what you were sharing, because of the way you were raised, you were taught very different teachings about God and Jesus and the gospel. But now as a Christian, just a fresh born Christian, it's so exciting. I want to talk to you more later as we keep in touch. Um, it's so exciting because now you have eyes to see. And I know that sounds funny for anyone listening, but like when you were in such and such, the LDS for so long, and like you said, like, I mean, you know, you, you seem like such a nice lady, but your marriage, it was all focused on doing these things. So in the end result of what you would get later. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so then sadly, when your husband was seeing things that were wrong and eventually left, well, then when you guys were splitting up, there was really nothing of a marriage. Mm -hmm. It was just all the LDS stuff keeping you guys together. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's very true from what I've heard from other people that I've talked to in the past, because it's all this stuff for the later results. 
Hmm. And so many marriages aren't now some are, some are, so be careful, but a lot of them it's, it's all based on what they're hoping to get later. Am I right in what you're saying? Yeah, I, I would think so. I think too, a big difference that I'm experiencing now too is, um, I was actually thinking about this, um, is I get to have this like personal walk and relationship and really like drive into like, like, God, what is my calling? Like, what do you need from me on this earth? Like I get to be with you in heaven forever. This, this time is very short, Mm -hmm. right? I get to show you certain things right now. What, what do you need from me right now? that is so powerful and so personal. Right. And so that means I have to listen. I have to humble myself and I have to, you know, um, do lots of different things. But, um, in the church, they tell you everything to do, right? Like here's the calling you're going to do and here's how you're going to do it. Here's the manual and here's, um, how often and here, you know, and here's who you're, who's your go minister to these relief society sisters, Right. And, and those are all great programs they've set up. I, I understand that. Like I do. I, I, I wish more people in the world had those program, right. like those, because they do. I mean, I, I would be, I would be like, I'm very grateful that at any given time, a million people are checking in on my daughters right. about certain things that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, yeah. asking, you know, I, I, I can, totally respect and appreciate that. Um, but I don't have to wait or I, like, I, I, there's just such a, like, I guess that, that personal relationship, that's the that's biggest the thing. thing, you know, that's this, yeah. Instead of like, in, instead of, I, I, it's sad, but I, I know because I, I wasn't that ex Mormon. There's the, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a huge community. There are ex Mormon Facebook groups, ex Mormon yes. tons, and they are bitter, angry. Yes. And they need Jesus. But, yeah. yeah. But they, a lot of them, you know, still try to go to church because it's all they know. And, and, and I'm not mad about that. But they, they're not, it's like such a passive, there's so much more for them in life. I, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not trying to belittle the church by saying that. I'm just saying it, it's just kind of like they're numbing themselves in all ways. Right. You know, like to, you know, and, and I've been there yeah. guilty. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's really interesting for sure. Yeah. And you're so fresh out of it and man, your journey is just beginning. It's so exciting for you. Um, just now, you know, just the freshness of it, like, and, I'm so happy you came and took some time to share a testimony here because I want to share this with other people. I think it's so exciting. And I've had people who have been on my channel who are former Jehovah's Witnesses, former, um, I had one guy, so you're my second one now. Another guy who was on my channel was a former LDS. I've had former oneness people on my channel and other things. And so one of the reasons why I like having someone like yourself come on and share your testimony is because there's going to be people, especially women more so than men, but who can resonate with your story. Mm -hmm. There's going to be other women who've been through what you've been through or guys who might've been on the other side, like how your husband was too. Right. And so a testimony is powerful because it's of a changed life, not a religious change of life, not of all the doings and this and that to gain something Mm -hmm. with the appearance of Christianity. But as you said a minute ago, it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what you're experiencing right now. That's a big difference. And I think a hard thing is, is, um, cause I've, I went through it and I still go through it is like, I still have like, well, can I do this? Can, can I do that? Can I, can I wear that? Can I, th- because it's, everything is, is really laid out in the Mormon church as far as a lot of those things. And so you're almost like, Hey, what am I buying here with this, with this Christianity thing, you know? Cause it's like, cause you're taught forever that they have the one true church, the restored gospel with the fullness, you know what I mean? Like it's, and so it's like, and, and, but, and so it's like, but you can't drink coffee and you can't drink, you know, like you can't, you can't, you have, you can't wear tank tops. Like there's just certain things. Like if it's, if you're temple worthy, yada, yada, yada. So it's like, okay, now I'm like, okay, I want to wear tank tops and I want to drink coffee. So I don't, uh, anyway, so now I'm like, okay, I Can like I tell you a quick story. Yeah. yeah. I've had many, many. Larry Saint missionaries in my house before in the past. 
And this is a true story. So if you guys out there, shh. At least one out of two LDS missionaries, if I offer them water, orange juice, or Dr. Pepper, guess which one at least half of them drank? Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny is because, you know, and I never said nothing. And I knew that that was a taboo thing. I always wondered what the guy who was over there drinking the water was like. He's drinking the water. The other guy is drinking the DP. I'm thinking they're going to have a fun story later. But, you know, I think a lot of a lot of guys who and gals who are of the LDS faith, they know certain things, like you've said, are taboo. But sometimes they didn't always adhere to it. Right. Yeah. And I think that's actually in a good that's healthy is because if you are so dictated by everything you can and cannot do, where then is true freedom? Right. Like as Christians, we have freedom. Of course, the Bible says certain things for sure not to do. Obviously, don't commit adultery, don't commit murder, nothing like that. But we have freedom still to choose many things in life. We're not robots. We're not like, you know, these little machines, you know, got to do all these things. And so that's what I think. Um, whoops, I don't know what I just did there. Um, that off there by accident. But that's um, that's one of the big differences that Christianity has compared to Larry Saints or Islam. Is because there's so much control. Mm. that they have over their people, what they can and cannot do, where if you are in Jesus Christ, there's true grace, true freedom. Oh, and as you talked about a genuine relationship, it's so, so and until someone really turns, repents from that and turns to Christ and experiences that sometimes that's just words that they hear. But when someone truly experiences Jesus, then there's just, I mean, I can look at you right now, the happiness that you've been sharing. There is new life yeah. in you and it's exciting to see. Yeah, that I'm so glad you brought up that freedom because, so I'm also very like, plant, like I'm like a plant, like I need to know the plan and the steps of the plan, like, right? Like that's how I've always been. And it's like, if that didn't work out, like what went wrong and why did they go wrong and what do we need to readjust? And I had this moment probably about a, a couple weeks ago where I'm praying and I like had this just breakthrough moment and I'm just like sobbing in gratitude because I was like, oh, I don't have to think of a plan anymore. Like Jesus, like he has the perfect plan for me. I just have to trust him and have his will, like wow. his will be done. And I, it was this this yoke for sure just broken off me. Wow. Like I don't have to have all the right answers. I don't have to know all the truth. I don't have to have the right parenting strategies. I don't have to know all the money techniques and all the wow. health strategies. And like God has God's part, like he knows everything. He knows me better than I know me. I wow. just have to trust him. It was wow. this free, like you're right. Like this freedom of I don't, I just have to do what he says. Like, I just have to find him, listen to him, his plan. Like it was so freeing. Wow. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. Wow. And I can see it because I've never experienced what you just said. I've heard it. I've talked to former Mormons. I've talked to ones who've come to Christ and I've heard the same similar things. And just, just seeing it again in your face brings me joy is because you are a new sister. In Christ. You are now a part of the body of Christ not a religion, not some organization. You can now live freely in Jesus Christ with your new life. And that's the, and, and see, I was talking to someone about this because I took my kids to this Christian Bible camp. So I was asking the children's minister all of this stuff last week. And I was like, to ask him what, about the faith with works is dead. Cause that's a big Mormon thing, you know, like the James one. And, and he's like, he was teaching me a little bit more about it. And I'm like, this is what it is. Like, I want to do things now. Like I want to help others more. I want, like, I want to do whatever works I can for the kingdom of God. Right. Right. Totally. Cause I have a live faith. Yeah. Like I don't have dead faith. So yeah. my works, like, I'm like, what can I do today? What can I do today? And now you today? are motivated from your heart mm -hmm. freely. Mm -hmm. Not out of obligation. Mm -mm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Well, listen, you've, you, this has been such a blessing. Um, you know, I could talk to you for three more hours if you wanted to talk, honestly. Yeah. Um, thank you. And thank you for all you do for real, <laughs> from my perspective, because it's, it's helped me a lot. So thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be part of your process and 
to help you in, in what's what's been going on in your life. That That's why I do what I do. And I know I get people who say a lot of things about me that are, you know, sometimes can be yucky, but I, but I, I take it for the right reason because I care about people and I want to help people, you know, come out of things. And sometimes I've had people tell me like, Kelly, you know, I used to really not like you <laughs> and they would give me the reasons, blah, blah. And then, you know, maybe years later, something would click through something through scripture, you know, that was shared. And then they would get in touch with me by email or phone call or somehow or else that they knew me personally. And they'd say, Kelly, you know, thank you. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. well, thank you. Praise the Lord. Right. Because that's yeah. what it's about. Yeah. So, amen. Um, can, can you do me this favor? Cause I want to keep in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Um, can you email me? Mm -hmm. uh, my email is Berean Perspective Apologetics okay. at gmail.com. And I want to get in touch with you, maybe keep in touch with you, maybe even give some suggestions where you're living for some fellowships and things okay. like that. I'm very familiar with Utah. I used to live in Las Vegas. All right. And uh, I would just love being in touch with you just to help you with other things, you know, that you may have questions because yes. you still have questions, right? Oh, and, millions. And I would love to help you in any way I can. Yeah, I love it. Okay, thank you. Can I pray for you before you go? Oh, please. Thank you. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for our new sister here, Becky. And I'm just so blessed for her coming on, sharing her story. And thank you so much for her heart and her excitement. Thank you that she now has come to know uh, things, sadly, for many, many years that she was a part of that was wrong. And we don't look at it as like evil or, you know, judgment. We just say, thank you, Lord, that... She now sees the light and she's now come to put her complete trust in your son, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross and rose again. And as your scripture says, for it is by grace we are saved through faith. It is a gift of God, it's not of ourselves. At least anyone should boast. And what Becky was just saying is it says, you prepared us to do good works, in verse 10. So Lord, I pray for her that she will serve you with her heart. She'll be a blessing to her children to her community um, and lord that she could be a light to share the good news to other people out there that might well obviously who are lds in her community and so lord i pray for her that you would uh, just be with her protect her and her family bless her show her grace help her to grow um, in your word and accuracy help her to be not caught up in false things and as she grows lord that you would use her for your reasons, for your purposes, uh, that she now has that freedom to serve you. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Becky, thank you for sharing your time with me tonight. Thank I look forward to talking to you more. Thank you. God bless. God bless.